good morning students in the previous video we discussed about advocacy groups then the types of advocacy groups and in that uh, media advocacy was the important uh, component we discussed about uh, the definition of media then what the role media plays in the uh, lives of the citizens and then uh, why self regulation is required for media today we will discuss about the role of media in india we'll see the history of media in our country so the starting point or the originating point uh, dates back to 1780 the first print communication print media named bengal gadget was started in 1780 by j a hickey and it was popularly known as calcutta advertiser as the name shows it clearly that the basic purpose of uh, this print media was advertisement but later on east india company tried to stop it to prevent the printing of bengal gadget and finally they were successful in 1787 but this laid foundation for free press in india various other uh, people were motivated by this and they started uh, print media in various parts of the country like print media was also started in other parts of country like india indian gadget in 1780 then calcutta gadget in 1784 similarly bengal journal in 1785 then the madras courier in 1785 and mumbai herald in 1789 so that was the basic initiating point and uh, various people in different parts of the country they started with the print media In 1818 Lord Hastings changed the policy of strict censorship which resulted into evolution of a number of newspapers in India earlier it was uh, the pre the press act was having various kind of uh, strict rules and regulations and censorship was there so because of that uh, various people were demotivated but because of these relaxations or uh, reduction in the strictness Uh, resulted into the evolution of various number of newspapers in india in 1843 first vernacular means regional language newspaper named mangalapuram samachara was published right this was written in local language this initiated evolution of vernacular newspapers in many other languages in the country so again motivated by this vernacular uh, language newspaper in various other parts of the country various other people started Uh, regional uh, newspapers in their own languages then amrit bazar patrika in bengal in uh, it was written in bengali it is the oldest and most popular paper in bengali then in 1867 first comprehensive press act was enacted by british government they brought a full fledged press act so that various kind of activities of press could be regulated by them so this act was result of efforts of sir thomas munro and sir metcalf this act was named as press and books registration act this uh, act is still in force but with various amendments obviously over the time period then after independence freedom of speech and expression became one of the fundamental rights we all know our constitution provide for the uh, freedom of speech and expression guaranteed by the constitution the concept of right to information is the basic right that include realization of all other rights which is rti right to information uh, which was included later on in our fundamental rights earlier it was not there in the constitution but because of various issues various matters later on it was decided by the government to uh, make right to information also as our basic fundamental right because each one of us has a right to know what the government is doing what various organizations are doing because it is for the public and they are working for them so they have a complete right to know about their functioning in a case in uh, 1986 the supreme court of india declared that state has power to take preventive steps to stop misuse of freedom of speech and expression in public interest it was noticed in various cases that uh, the freedom of speech has been taken for granted and various misuses have been uh, reported by the court so in 1986 in one of the uh, court case supreme court announced that uh, the government has certain powers so that they can stop the misuse of freedom of speech and expression if it is in public interest but any preventive measures that prevent the idea of press to publish constitutes as a serious encroachment on the right of freedom of speech and expression but in this case government cannot stop media from publishing 
various ideas various views various information if that is done that will be considered as a serious encroachment serious uh, interference with the right of freedom of speech and expression but at the same time it is the duty of press not to publish any false news item so if uh, press has so much power if press has been given so much freedom so much rights so in that case it is their duty it is their ethical moral duty that they should not publish any fake news uh, because uh, people believe in media and if they are uh, publishing certain uh, informations or certain news which is fake that is obviously a um, decide on the public now the role of new technologies in media advocacy now media is not only limited to print or uh, tv or radio media now it is much more than that so how that transformation has took place in our country and what is the role of that transformation that has brought uh, a new paradigm in the media first we'll see the transformation new technologies like mobiles internet social networking sites we all know skype twitter instagram facebook youtube are uh, various uh, social networking sites which are transforming the way uh, the human rights are defended or educated now technologies of uh, globalized world these all kinds of technologies which we discussed just in the previous point these are global technologies now we are sharing information not only within our country we are sharing the information globally these technologies are amplifying information about human rights abuses and humanitarian crises and um, helped in creating a global human rights community earlier uh, we were sharing information within the country we were uh, sharing the information of human rights and their violations what whatever has happened in our country only but now because of these global platforms we are able to share the human uh, human right issues at the international level also so we have created a global human right community so that we can come to know about the human rights scenario all over the world then uh, initiate quick action because of these uh, technologies uh, quick actions have been initiated because uh, here the speed of information transfer is much 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 faster and uh, that puts a great pressure as the community builds up as the people uh, together come up for a particular issue for a particular cause or for a particular human right violation in that case government feel pressure to take some quick action so these compelling message shared on powerful media can initiate quick action right then legitimate the universal declaration of human rights also declared the fundamental right to seek receive and impart information through any media so there is no question of legality also we are free to seek information we are free to receive information and we are also free to impart any information through any type of media as it has been given in the UD, udhr of united nation that is the universal declaration of human rights and it is our fundamental right now uh, we talk about uh, these technologies so there is a there is a new term named as dig, uh, digital freedom as all these technologies are related to digital world so we have uh, introduced a new word digital freedom also research conducted by human rights centers on advocacy recognizes the importance of digital freedom for democracy as democracy creates freedom for everybody in the similar manner in the digital world digital freedom should also be there to uh, uphold the characteristics or uh, the points or the features of democracy and the protection and promotion of human rights so if digital freedom is not given that is that will not be considered as democracy that will not be considered as uh, the fulfillment of human rights so now it is a new term which has been introduced into the human rights uh, scenario then the effectiveness effectiveness of media advocacy depends upon timely accurate and reliable information no doubt about it if the information is timely that whenever something wrong happens when whenever there is a human right violation that should be shared immediately that information should be accurate and reliable obviously that is a must if media is uh, floating some fake news or information that is for sure will create a mess in the society 
so it should be accurate and reliable so if it is accurate if, if it is reliable it if, uh, if it is timely obviously that media advocacy would be the strongest no other uh, me, uh, method could take place of this kind of advocacy powerful messaging and free access to media all these are the attributes which decide the effectiveness of media advocacy all these features are present in the new technologies mentioned above right they provide timely information they provide if it is accurate if it is uh, not fake in that case that will surely be a uh, surely be of good help to others so these are more effective and efficient in their role play that's all about media advocacy this was the second last chapter in the last chapter we will be discussing about human right awareness that's all for today Thank you and have a good day.